So as we wrap up Kids Week here on Q13 News, we want to focus on a solution to one of the biggest issues facing youth today, a mental health epidemic. Dr. Rupin Thakar is the president of the state chapter of the American Academy of Pediatrics. You recently penned this article in Crosscut, um, the title, Washington Youth Are Facing a Mental Health Epidemic. But then you tell us the legislature can help, which gives me some hope here. So let's start at the beginning of this, an epidemic. That is a big word. It's a I think a scary word for a lot of parents. Is it that bad? It really is. The, the epidemic is an accurate uh, term for what's happening. I'd say easily as a primary care pediatrician, about one in five appointments that I have on a day-to-day -day basis are about mental health disorders. One in five? Yes, yeah, one in five. And we're talking about kids and teenagers. We are. Yeah. Wow, can yeah. you give me some examples of the kinds of struggles that kids and teens are facing in our state? Absolutely, so I think what we're seeing a lot of in teens is depression, um, and in younger kids and teens we're seeing anxiety, and then also a lot of behavioral issues at school, which usually are manifestations of anxiety. And you know, one thing that I've seen also, I think you can ask any pediatricians we've seen over the last decade, the number of teens with suicidal thoughts or even suicidal attempts has about doubled in just the last 10 years alone. It's I'm a dad and this stuff scares me to death because I'm afraid I'm gonna miss these signs in my kids. So why do you think we're seeing this epidemic and this growing concern and our kids struggling with this? Yeah, I think there's a lot of factors at play. You know, I think certainly the, the rise of social media and use of electronics is, is playing a role. I think teens and kids are feeling more socially isolated. There's more financial strain on families and a lot of performance pressure on kids and teens as well. You know, I think we don't know if there's one of those causes that's really the main issue or if it's really all together. We probably need more research to truly answer that question. Yeah, but it sounds like to me, though, you're proposing at least a partial solution that lawmakers could step in if they could unlock a little bit of money. Can Absolutely. you tell us about what you think lawmakers could do here pretty quickly if they could do this? Oh, you bet. So I think you know what's really, really frustrating for pediatricians is that when we identify a child that needs help with a mental health issue, we're struggling to get them in to see anybody in a reasonable amount of time or at all. And one of the reasons that that's such a big problem here in Washington State is that Apple Health for Kids, which is our state Medicaid program for kids, and one in two kids in Washington State is covered by Apple Health, their, their rates to mental health counselors is abysmally low. Medicaid in our state pays about half as much as Medicare does to a mental health counselor. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So we're talking a counselor can, will get paid twice as much to see an adult as they will to see a kid for the same type of visit. And so counselors want to help kids, but they simply can't afford to. Right. Yeah. And you know, a common model in this country right now is to start to embed mental health counselors into clinics. So kids can actually get care the same place to go to see their primary care doctor, which is great, right? Then you take away the barriers to accessing care, and you also take away some of the stigma associated with seeking mental health care. But here in Washington State, we're not able to do that because we can't, we can't afford it. The cost of putting a counselor in my clinic would cost more than what Medicaid would pay for us to, to see those kids. So look into the camera right over here and tell me, uh, what would you say to a lawmaker who, who, who could be watching right now? What do you need sure. from them? Well, the state legislature, right now, you are negotiating a budget. It's the last thing you have to do before you, you leave Olympia for the, for the year. And as you're negotiating this budget, Look at this issue. We, we have an estimate that it would cost the state about $15 million to bring Medicaid rates for mental health counselors to parity with Medicare rates. This is doable. $15 million is not that much money for our state. It's less than one half of 1% of our state budget. And if the legislature doesn't do this, not only are you failing kids right now, but you're also costing the state a lot more down the line. We know that with mental health disorders, you make a bigger impact when you intervene early. And if we don't help kids now, it's very likely that down the line, they're gonna have more costly issues and may have to, to seek emergency medical attention for something that we could have prevented right now. I know for a fact that lawmakers watch our show, so I hope they heard your message. I want to end on, a, on another note really quickly. We only have like 30 seconds or so. Parents, teachers, friends, what, what's your message for them since we know that lawmakers can't turn this switch immediately? What, what yeah. should they do to help kids? You bet. Well, if you are, as a parent, worried about your child's mood or anxiety level or their, their behavior at school, talk to your primary care provider right now. Get the ball rolling on getting them help because it, it right now takes a while to get them in and early intervention is really, really important. And as a parent, if you're worried about your child's safety immediately, then you can get them emergency attention. If you go to an emergency room, they can get an urgent psychological consultation and keep your home safe. 
you know, that means locking up firearms and ammunition separately, locking up things like knives or prescription medications. You want your home to be a safe environment, and then you want to encourage your child to, to talk to you. Just be open to them. Let them know that they can voice their concerns. Thank you very much. We really appreciate your time, Dr. Rupin Thakar. Um, thank you. Thank this you. is such important conversation. I hope we can continue it. And thank you for standing up and saying it needs to be done. Thank you so much. Appreciate I appreciate you bringing a voice to this.